President Rodrigo Duterte approves proposal to increase excise taxes on tobacco and alcohol. Obviously. In fact, he's being there to file it. Kumbaga, do your worst and we will do our best. Malacanang not worried by House Majority Leader Rolando Andayas a threat to sue Budget Secretary Jokno if the Budget Department fails to increase government workers' pay by January 15. And uh, the LTO opens more accredited clinics for its online submission of medical certificates of driver's license applicants. Good evening. President Rodrigo Duterte backs the proposal, which seeks to impose higher excise taxes on tobacco and alcoholic beverages. The president also eyes to use a part of the road board's fund for plans to rehabilitate the Manila Bay. Rosalie Cos tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte is looking to certify as urgent the bill which seeks to increase taxes on tobacco and alcoholic beverages. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo says this is in support of the proposal presented by the Department of Health and the Department of Finance that aims to solve the problem of high mortality rate and increasing number of Filipinos falling ill due to smoking and drinking alcohol. It is also aimed at generating funds for the implementation of the Universal Health Care Program. Under the proposal, a 60 peso excise tax will be imposed on per pack of cigarettes and 40 pesos for each liter of liquor. So the recommendation is that that bill should be passed, signed into law. That was what was approved last night. Last December 2018, the House of Representatives has already approved on third and final reading the two measures seeking to add 2 pesos and 50 cents in excise taxes on cigarettes every year from July 2019 to 2022. But under the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion or TRAIN law, the excise tax for tobacco increased from 30 to 35 pesos in July 2018. Meanwhile, Malacanang says that President Duterte is eyeing to use a part of the fund of the road board for plans to rehabilitate Manila Bay. The chief executive wants Manila Bay to be cleaned within his term but the process may take longer. The palace is also unsure of when the rehab works will start since the proposal to abolish the road board remains pending. Congress must also approve the budget allocation for the Manila Bay rehabilitation. Panelo says it is possible for the chief executive to release an executive order on the said rehabilitation. Dahil ang laki ng, ano, ang laki ng Manila Bay, ang daming rivers na lilinisin, daming steros. Rosa Licoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. The Manila Electric Company, or Meralco, is set to reduce its rates by 34 centavos per kilowatt hour this month. This translates to a 68 peso savings for households consuming 200 kilowatts and as much as 700 pesos for those using up to 500 kilowatts per month. Meralco says the power rate reduction is due to lower generation charges. Meanwhile, the Department of Energy is set to investigate over 300 gasoline stations that have begun imposing additional tax on oil products. DOE says a total of 268 gasoline stations of Petron and 32 from Flying V were discovered to have imposed the second tranche of excise tax on oil despite the agency's call on oil firms to defer the implementation until mid of January. The agency is set to visit the said gas stations to check if they have followed the requirements in imposing the excise tax on oil such as placing banners advising consumers of the said measure. Have you ever wondered why the prices of oil products vary from gasoline station to another? Here's Moroxon to tell us why in this special report. A motorist has at least one favorite gasoline station to gas up to. It can be because of the quality or the good service they offer. But what consumers really want is the low price. There is no doubt that everyone wants to save money. That is why every motorist is always searching for the gasoline station that sells oil products for a lower price. But why do prices differ in every gasoline station? The reason behind this is the oil deregulation law. 
The Oil Deregulation Law or the Republic Act 8479 is a law that gives oil companies the liberty to set their own prices to have a competitive market. This means that the government cannot dictate on oil companies as to how much they will set in pricing petroleum products. And the result is, there are some who sell it for a high price and some for cheaper price. In a gasoline station in Marikina, a gasoline is cheaper by 6 pesos and diesel by 4 pesos. Usually, it's more eh, compared to other big companies of gas. It's more here, sir. And it's easy to access to the house. It's more expensive. Yes, all of my equipment is more expensive. Ano, unang -una kasi mura siya. But the nearby gasoline station in the same street sells in a much higher price. Motorists have different reasons why they choose to gas up with some gasoline stations even though their oil products are more expensive. Wala na ba? Kung saan lang ako mabutin. Kung saan lang ako mag-tempo ka. Kung sa madaan na mapagpakargahan ng gas? Uh, Siyempre yung quality ng, ano, ng gas, tsaka yung, uh, yung gandang na idudulot niya sa machine ko, sa mga kamakin ako sa motor ko. Uh, kasi inisip ko baka mama may halo or marumi. Kasi pag marumi, syempre, pro, mag, uh, mag, uh, nasisira yung mga makina yun. The Department of Energy said there are factors affecting the oil price. One is the price in the world market and the other is market competition. But for a consumer group, oil prices have a big effect on the lives of Filipinos. Vic Dimagiba of Laban Consumer Group said it is possible that oil prices and the excise tax will be the reason of higher inflation this year. Businessmen will surely pass on the effect of higher oil prices to the consumers. So lahat yan ay ipapataw sa presyo ng pangunahin bili o mga serbisyo. Ihugutin nila yan at tayo mga consumers ang magbabayan niyan at the end of the supply chain. But according to an economist, it looks like that the excise tax on oil will not greatly affect the lives of Filipinos this year. Now, sabi ng mga eksperto na itong 2019 daw, bababa pa daw ang presyo ng langis sa mundo. Kaya hindi tayo kailangan matakot o mag-worry uh, maganda ang inflation sa Pilipinas itong 2019. Meanwhile, the Energy Department is regularly checking on the quality and quantity of oil products being sold in gasoline stations. So, sakali mang merong siguro silang nakikita na pang aabuso, nandito naman ang Department of Energy, pero yun lang iparating sa amin, mag-spire sila ng complaint. Last year, oil prices is one of the reasons of the high inflation in the country. The economic managers of the president believe that this will not be the case this 2019, and inflation may possibly go lower by 2 to 4 percent. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. The Land Transportation Office adds more accredited clinics in its system after its implementation of online submission of medical certificates drew disapproval from driver's license applicants. John Nano tells us why. The Land Transportation Office reports that the transaction rate of its online submission of medical certificates of driver's license applicants has improved up to 60% on Tuesday from 20 to 30% observed on the first day of its implementation on January 7. This is following complaints raised on social media on delays and inconveniences that the system caused after applicants found out that they have to get the medical certificates from clinics and hospitals that are accredited by the LTO. Applicants were also disappointed to find that the LTO IT system has listed only few clinics when it implemented its newest requirement. To address this problem, the LTO updated the list of its accredited clinics in its system. Regional 1 Director Attorney Shofi Lagwadi says this move helped improve the speed of transaction in their offices. Yun hong length of time ng, ng uh, processing is 8 minutes. Uh, ngayon po na reduce na po namin from 8 minutes to about Two minutes na lang po. So, kaya na po namin panilbihan yung lahat po ng mga nagtatransak. Guadis explains only few clinics submitted their application when the agency opened the accreditation process last October. By December po, tumatanggap na po kami ng accreditation. 
Ang naging problema po is yung mga clinic may mga last minute nang nag-submit ng kanilang mga requirements. So hindi kaagad ma-credit. As of 12 noon today, LTO was able to encode 65% of their accredited clinics. The LTO assures it is doing all efforts to fix the system, to avoid inconveniences, and to expedite the process of driver's license application. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Malacanang is unfazed with the threat of House Majority Leader Rolando Andaya Jr. to file a case of four mandamus against Budget Secretary Benjamin Jocno if the scheduled salary increase will not be implemented this year. Let's find out why from Rosalie Cos. Malacanang backs the challenge issued by Budget Secretary Benjamin Jocno to House Majority Leader Rolando Andaya to make good of his threat to file a case for mandamos if the Department of Budget and Management fails to implement the scheduled salary increase for government employees this year. Andaya has said in a statement that he will personally file the case before the Supreme Court if the DBM fails to release the fund for the pay increase by January 15. Obviously. In fact, he's being dared to file it. Kumbaga, do your worst and we will do our best. According to Malacanang, Andaya seems to lack common sense because one of the effects of a re-enacted budget this year is the non-implementation of the fourth tranche of the salary standardization law, particularly for teachers, policemen, and soldiers. The palace insists it is the fault of the House of Representatives for not passing the 2019 proposed national budget on time. It's elementary. The salary level authorized in the 2018 budget covers the third tranche of SSL only. The fourth tranche is provided for in the 2019 President's Budget para sa next year. So, since the 2019 budget is yet to be approved and we are operating under a re-enacted budget 2018, necessarily, logically, there is no legal basis for giving the fourth tranche. Baga common sense. Malacanang also says the president still believes in Jokno despite the allegations of budget insertions he is facing. Sabi ni President Gagabi, ano yung insertion? How can you insert something na ikaw nagpiprepare? Kaya ka nga nagpiprepare, di ikaw talagang gumagawa nun. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. Authorities assure that security measures are all set for the annual procession of Catholic devotees in Quiapo, Manila on Wednesday or tomorrow. More than 7,000 cups will be deployed along the procession route and a no-sail zone will be implemented on Pasig River and nearby waters of Manila Bay. JL Asayo tells us why. The Philippine Coast Guard inspected the coastal area of Manila Bay and parts of the Pasig River a day before the annual traslacion in Quiapo. The Coast Guard sailed from the back of the Quirino Grandstand where no sail zone is in effect until tomorrow. Two 44-meter vessels will also be placed on standby to respond to any untoward incident. Kasama doon sa paghahanda ng Philippine Coast Guard, yung dual role ng mga barko, aside from safety, na maging evacuation transport kung sakaling magkaroon ng malaking problema, halimbawa magkaroon ng stampede at may mga kailangang evacuate ng mga tao na hindi maidaan sa mga kalsada, yung mga rubber boats ang magdadala, dadali doon sa isang parang uh, medical post na barko. PCG also inspected the water surrounding the Jones Bridge where the procession will pass. This is to ensure that no Catholic devotees will jump or fall off its railings as observed in past traslasyon. Nakakatakot minsan pag dumaan na yung poon, pag hindi ka nakaredy, pwede ka talagang malaglag kasi bumubuka yung you know, andami doon sa Jones Bridge. Uh, the last time, meron pang mga tumayo doon sa poste para lang makaiwas doon sa bugso ng tao. More than 300 personnel from different Coast Guard units will also be deployed during the event. The Philippine National Police, for its part, assures its security measures are all set for the annual procession. Around 7,200 cops plus 2,000 members from the AFP's NCR Joint Task Force will also be deployed to monitor the event. Wala tayo nare-receive ng mga uh, confirmed or verified uh, threat, pero... Di ba nasa state of emergency and lawlessness tayo? So expected na dapat naghahanda tayo. Kaya katuloy-tuloy yung ating coordination 
with other agencies, pati din sa intelligence community regarding this. Authorities remind the Catholic joining the procession not to bring bags and umbrellas and avoid wearing any headgear for security reasons. JL Asayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Department of Health places all public hospitals on code white alert from January 7 to 10 as part of its preparations for the annual Catholic procession in Quiapo, Manila. DOH says the code white alert refers to the readiness status of the facilities assuring the availability of surgeons, physicians and other medical staff to respond to any emergency situation. Emergency health service, nurses, and administrative personnel residing at hospital dormitories are also placed on an on-call status to enable immediate mobilization. DOH will also station 13 medical teams comprised of doctors, nurses, and paramedics from Metro Manila hospitals along the procession route. A tour of historic sites in Manila can now be enjoyed by persons with special needs. JL Asayo is back to tell us why. Philippines is known to its breathtaking views and other famous tourist destinations. To name a few, the perfect cone of Mayon Volcano, the planting fields in the Banawi Rice Terraces. Of course, there are also historical sites where one will know the deep and rich history of the Philippines, especially if one can hear and interact. Just like in Fort Santiago in Tramuros, Manila, where every wall serves as a living witness from bloodshed by our heroes who have fought for freedom we are enjoying. In the tail end kasi nung Second World War, nung 1945, in Feb February to March, uh, marami kasing namatay sa Intramuros at particularly sa Fort Santiago, naging kulungan kasi siya uh, ng mga prisoners of war. Kung kaya uh, doon, uh, bagsagan siyang uh, shrine of freedom. But this could be a challenge to our deaf community. With this, the Department of Tourism opened its program Tourism for All, gave way for the deaf tourists to experience a full satisfaction of their visit to the place. Through the DOT's accredited deaf tour guides, deaf tourists will be guided just like any other usual tourist to enjoy and understand what the history is telling through sign language. One of the first deaf tourists to experience this service is a Filipino-American named Alathea Boyer, who's visiting the Intramuros Manila for the first time. This is my first time to have a tour guide and I'm so excited because they are also deaf. The definite tour guide. So, also, wow, uh, they, they led us to see the beautiful places, where to go, uh, like the historical or national museum. The DOT says they are committed to deliver the best services to every local or foreign tourist, especially to the persons with disability. Maglalagay kami ng PWD friendly na lugar kung saan like dito sa visitor center ng kiosk o ng lugar kung saan pwedeng uh, mamalagi muna yung mga uh, deaf tour guides. So kung may mga ilangan ng guides, uh, yun, nandito naman kami para tumulong sa kanila. JL Asayo UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up from where uh, Rina Villamor Camara left off. Amangel Diego passed to the third, and here are the headlines. Yung mga police na pumupunta sa mga eskwelahan ay may dalang mga memo. Malinaw din dun sa memo na uh, kaugnay ang paniniktik na ito sa parating na eleksyon. The Alliance of Concerned Teachers to file a complaint against PNP and DILG over the alleged illegal surveillance on their members. One of the suspects in the Cotabata Mall blast is now under police custody. And Napolcom strips Daraga Albay Mayor Carlwin Bal Baldo of police powers after he was implicated in the killing of Congressman Rodel Batocabe. The Alliance of Concerned Teachers is planning to file a complaint against the Philippine National Police and the Department of the Interior and Local Government over the reported profiling of its members. Here's why from Grace Kasin. The Alliance of Concerned Teachers accuses Philippine National Police and the Department of the Interior and Local Government of violating election laws and data privacy after allegedly conducting surveillance on their members in Metro Manila and in provinces. 
According to Act Teacher Party List Representative Antonio Tino, they're going to file a complaint before the Office of the Ombudsman following reports from their members about police officers allegedly going around schools to ask about their names and affiliations. Yung mga polis na pumupunta sa mga eskwelahan ay may dalang mga memo, sa direktiba nga, ay uh, kuni ng pangalan ng lahat ng mga miyembro ng AK o ng mga uh, naka-align o kaalyado o uh, kahanay ng AK. Malinaw din dun sa memo na uh, kaugnay ang paniniktik na ito sa parating na eleksyon. The group is also calling on Congress to investigate the issue. Ano bang turing nila sa mga teachers kaaway ba ng administrasyong Duterte? The Commission on Human Rights said in a statement that the PNP's alleged move to surveil teachers infringes on the rights to privacy and association. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde assures that they are ready to face the complaint but this will not stop them from gathering intelligence reports as this is part of their job to protect the public from enemies of the state. Hindi lahat ng member ng ACT are supporting the, uh, the left. Kaya kailangan makita kung sino talaga ang sumusuporta in their uh, organization. If they can file a case, we can, they can, we can always file counter charges also. Malacanang has said earlier that ACT members should not worry if they are not doing anything illegal. Kung halimbawa may nag-report sa iyo na itong isang teacher nito o dalawang teacher nito na nakikitang nakikipag-ugnayan sa mga identified na mga NPA o na pinagdududuhan na NPA, eh kung ikaw ba polis, hindi mo i-monitor yung galaw nila. Grace Kasin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A suspect in a bombing incident in a mall in Cotabato City is now under police custody. However, police investigators are yet to identify the group behind the blast that killed two individuals and injured 34 others. Lea Ilagan tells us why. One of the suspects in the bomb attack on South Seas Mall in Cotabato City yielded to authorities on Sunday, January 6, according to the Philippine National Police Region 12. Police Regional Office 12 Director, Police Chief Superintendent Eliseo Rasco says, Salipudin Pasandalan was turned in by his relatives after they saw his image on television as one of the persons implicated in the blast on December 31st that killed two people and injured 34 others. Ongoing yung ating investigation and this morning, ang directive ko dun sa ating uh, SITG commander ay mapailan na ng kaso within today. Rasko noted, however, that Pasandalan still refuses to speak of the incident and he wants to be with his lawyer all the time. Wala pa tayong nakikitang grupo kasi malalaman natin yung who is behind yung personalities and what group is behind kapag meron na tayong nakuhang tao at meron na siyang binanggit na personalities and group. But Rasko added that their evidence against Pasandalan are strong. Based on the results of the investigation on the CCTV footage that was recovered in the blast site, the CCTV footage showed a suspect placing the bomb at the counter at the second floor of the said mall. Kung makikita niyo rito sa kuha dito sa Lotto Outlet, Siya yung, gina, siya yung kumukover dito sa bata. Siya yung uh, magkatabing magkatabi, siya yung kumukover habang nilalagay nung nakabakpak yung second IED dito sa uh, shelf ng uh, Lotto Card. Among the angles that people are looking into are the retaliation of the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighter after Pasandalan's young brother was killed in a military operation in December 27. Intense political rivalry and the participation of Daula Islamia group in the bombing. Police are eyeing eight suspects in the bombing incident. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana held talks with Cotabato City Mayor and Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF regarding the proposed Bangsamoro Basic Law or BBL. Aileen Cerudo will tell us why. Department of National Defense or DND Secretary Delphine Lorenzana 
puts an end to the reported threats and intimidation on the voters in Cotabato City in connection with the upcoming plebiscite for the ratification of Bangsamoro Basic Law or BBL on January 21. According to Lorenzana, he recently had talks with the camp of Mayor Cynthia Guiani Sayadi and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF. Both parties were accusing each other of threatening and intimidating voters for the upcoming plebiscite. Sabi ng uh, city mayor, uh, the Imailek is terrorizing the city to force them to vote for yes. Sabi naman nung uh, kabila, ipinipigilan naman daw ni uh, Mayor Sincha na magkampanya yung mga Imailek dun sa lugar para daw manalo yung no. Lorenzana added that if needed, they are prepared to send more troops in the city. He also said that the plebiscite is one of the challenges they will face this year. Because aside from Cotabato and Isabela, there are six more towns in Lanao del Norte that wants to become part of the Bangsamora region. But this was opposed by the rest of the province of Lanao del Norte, causing for a vote in the whole province. Pag nag-vote ng buong probinsya na no, then they remain as part of uh, Lanao Norte. To maintain the process of democracy, Lorenzana appealed to both parties to let each other campaign freely and respect the decision of the people. Walang takutan, uh, nobody will intimidate anybody. Uh, all the leaders there, uh, in my left, saka yung, uh, yung sitting mayor, is to assure the people that, that they will be allowed to vote without intimidation, without fear. Eileen Sarudo, UNTV. News and Rescue. A candidate can be disqualified if he appears in a movie or will have a movie showing about his life story during an election campaign period, according to the Commission on Elections. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Commission on Elections or COMELEC warns that a candidate will be put at a risk of getting disqualified if a film depicting his life will be shown to the public during the election campaign period from February 12 to May 11, 2019. According to COMELEC spokesman director James Jimenez, this is considered an election offense with a penalty of one to six year imprisonment, disqualification to hold any public office and the deprivation of the right of suffrage. The exhibition of any cinematographic work, any television program, um, focusing primarily on the life of a candidate or featuring that candidate as the main player in that particular production is prohibited from the start of the campaign period. So that's pretty clear. Comelex made this statement after the plan to release a movie about the life story of former PNP chief and senatorial aspirant Ronald Bato de la Rosa surfaced. But according to election law expert attorney George Irwin Garcia, there will be no problem if the producers will release the movie and have it shown in cinemas before the campaign period starts. So, ako sa kanila, mas maganda, ipanabas na lang nila ito bago sana yung mismo campaign period which is February 12. O kaya naman, wala tayong choice kung hindi after na lang. Attorney Garcia warns that a candidate will likely be disqualified if he pays for a supporter to distribute campaign materials containing movies or documentary about him. Sa akin palagay, ipipresume na may kinalaman siya at alam niya yung pagpapalabas na yan. Dahil siyempre, kung ang dating niyan, parang biography niya yan, hindi ba hindi naman ikaw makakapagpalabas nung patungkol sa buhay mo nang hindi ka man lang natanong o hindi ka man lang uh, 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 nagbigay ng dagda, kadagdagang kaalaman tungkol sa papalabas na yon. Meanwhile, former PNP Chief De La Rosa is yet to give his reaction on the issue. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Former DILG Secretary Rafael Aluna plans to push for the revival of death penalty and to amend the country's laws on human security and criminal justice system if he wins a seat in the Senate in the upcoming May midterm elections. Ray Pelayo tells us why. Rafael Alulan III served as the Secretary of the Department of the Interior and Local Government from 1992 to 1995 under President Fidel V. Ramos. During his stint as DILG head, he initiated Oplan Paglalansag, or the famous Alunan Doctrine, which sets the rule that more than two armed men moving or assembling in a group constitute a private army that must be broken up and disarmed. It also called for the recovery of loose firearms throughout the country. 
Since then, his initiative became a popular measure against armed group in the country. After 20 years of being a private citizen, Alunan is making a comeback in the political arena. This time, as a senatorial hopeful in the upcoming May midterm elections, he is running under Bagumbayan Political Party. In an interview in the program, Get It Straight with Daniel Razon earlier, the former DILG chief said he cannot be complacent in the election although he has secured the support of President Rodrigo Duterte. He noted that he still has to persuade and make himself known to the younger generation of voters. Sabi ko, I'm still running mm -hmm. uh, in May. I, I will not run if you don't support me. Mm -hmm. Ang sabi niya naman sa akin, of course I will support you but you need more exposure. If given the chance in the Senate, Alunan wants to do an inventory of the existing laws and classify them whether they need to be reviewed, removed or amended. His top priorities would be improvements in the country's criminal justice system. Ang nangyari sa amin, oh. na panahon namin, inumpisa namin yung paglilinis ng pulis. Mm -hmm. no? Pero yung paglilinis ng fiskal, yung mga judges, ay hindi sumunod. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kailangan sabay-sabay yan eh, kasi criminal justice system. Na hanggang system. ngayon, eh, yun ang Correct. patuloy na nabubulok. So yun ang gagawin kong panibagong legislation. He also eyes to amend the current Human Security Act to impose measures on national security. Like the Human Security Act. Mm -hmm. eh, walang ipin. Mm -hmm. Walang ipin. So, kaya't we're the favorite playground of terrorists dito sa Pilipinas. Mm -hmm. Why? Because mahina ng ating batas, mahina din ating enforcement. Likewise, Alunan wants to include illegal drugs, plunder, and human trafficking to be among the offenses punishable by death penalty. He added that he wants to regulate access on porn sites in the country to cure the country's bad image of being considered the top porn watchers in the world. Ang mga kabataan natin, pati tayo, malipunan, we are considered the top porn watchers in the, country, in, in the world. He calls politicians and government leaders to unite to better serve the Filipino people. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The National Police Commission or NAPOLCOM has stripped Daraga Albay Mayor Carlwin Baldo of his authority over the local police after he was, he was implicated in the killing of Acobicol Party List Representative Rodel Batocabe and his police aide SPO2 Orlando Diaz. My Bermudez tells us why. The National Police Commissioner NAPOLCOM has revoked the deputation and suspended the authority of Daraga Albay Mayor Carlwin Baldo over the local police. In a resolution dated January 7, 2019, the NAPOLCOM and Bank approved the withdrawal of Baldo's deputation after he was tagged as the principal suspect in the murder of a Cobicol Partilist Representative Rodel Batocabe and the death of a security detail SPO to Orlando Diaz. Batocabe and Diaz were shot dead during a gift-giving event in Burgos. Village in Daraga last December 22. According to NAPOLCOM Vice Chairman and Executive Officer Attorney Rogelio Casurao, Baldo violated three of the four protocols along with the said police power. These include abuse of authority, supporting a criminal, and participation in activities that will jeopardize national security and peace and order. Mayor Baldo allegedly committed abuse of authority for the employment of confidential staff under fictitious names, which is a blatant disregard of existing rules and regulations. He also allegedly utilized a private armed group in contract, killing as a gun for hire syndicate, which is a clear act of providing material support to criminal elements, which negates the effectiveness of the peace and order campaign. There also supervision on the PNP. So, because he doesn't have administrative control and operational supervision, he doesn't have to mag-direct, hindi niya na pwedeng sabihan, utusan yung PNP. And nawala na rin, no, even yung authority niya magbigay ng disiplina na binibigay ho ng NAPOLCOM sa kanya bilang mayor. At pangalawa ho, pati yung, yung authority niyang pumili ng chief of police. Meanwhile, the slain lawmakers camp continued to distribute gift items to the residents of Daraga as initiated by Congressman Batocabe before it was cut short by his brutal death. According to Jose Espinas, Batocabe's supposed running mate in the election, such advocacy of the slain lawmaker will continue in his memory. Legacy niya ito eh, ni Congressman Rodel. Legacy niya na no, masaya yung mga, mga taga-daraga. Lalong-lalo na no, yung mga senior citizen eh, at mga may kapansanan. 
Espinas also revealed that the Batocabe family has chosen a substitute candidate for the late congressman, but they chose not to reveal who the person is at this time. Batokabe was eyeing the mayoral seat of Daraga in the upcoming polls before he was assassinated. Meanwhile, an immigration lookout bulletin order has been issued against the seven suspects in Batokabe murder case, including Mayor Baldo. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Darga Albay. Philippine National Police Chief Oscar Albayalde will recommend to the Department of the Interior and Local Government to give the 50 million peso reward money to the witness in the killing of Congressman Rodel Batocabe and his security aid. Here's why from Lea Ilagan. Philippine National Police Chief, Police Director General Oscar Albayalde is in favor of giving the 50 million pesos reward money to Emmanuel Judavar, the witness in the assassination of Ako Bicol Party List Representative Rodel Batocabe and his police escort SPO to Orlando Diaz. Judavar was the one who named the seven prime suspects, including alleged mastermind Daraga Mayor Carlwin Baldo. It will be recalled that Judevar initially surrendered to the police for his alleged role in hatching the assassination but not the actual killing, which he claims he had no part in. However, the PNP chief clarified that Department of Interior and Local Government Secretary Eduardo Año has yet to green light the granting of said bounty. But if it were up to him, Albayalde says the reward money should go to Judavar, whose testimony prompted the investigation into the lawmaker's brutal death. Siya ang tatanggap doon sa ibibigay na reward. Kasi nagsimula naman kasay sa kanya lahat yun. Remember yung involvement niya was uh, planned yung August pa. And then humiwalay siya sa grupo ni Mayor Baldo. All suspects who surrendered also confirmed Judavar's statement that Mayor Baldo allegedly offered 5 million pesos for the assassination of Congressman Batucabe. The eldest son of the slain lawmaker agrees with Albayalde's proposal. As for me nga, sabi ko, alikan ko pa mga kamay nila eh. Turo lang nila yung mastermind. Yun lang naman talagang uh, important, yung mastermind. Maybe, sure. siguro, time will tell. Baka mapatawad ko pa yung mismong gunman. Maybe. Master may nagpapatay. Ibang usapan yun. Meanwhile, the PNP Criminal Investigation and Detection Group clarified that Judavar was already in their custody when he asked for some money from Christopher Naval, alias Stooping, who is one of the murder suspects. CIDG Director, Police Chief Superintendent Amador Corpus says it was all part of their investigation to confirm the identity of the assailants. Humihingi siya actually, but that was already part of the operation kasi we're trying to identify kung sino yung grupo. That's why ginawa po ni Judah Barrio. Meanwhile, the PNP Bicol region is investigating a gun for hire group allegedly headed by former scout ranger Gilbert Concepcion. Police investigation showed that Naval initially contacted Concepcion's group to execute the assassination of Batucabe. Itong Concepcion group, uh, former military na parang naging rogue na so mga gun for hire. Actually, we are uh, looking for them, nagkakanda kami ng operations against them because some of the contractors are complaining that nag extort ito ng money from the contractors. Police are also looking into a politician in Masbate that Naval allegedly met prior to Batucabe's murder. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. Filipino singer Rani Raimundo completes his top four picks to battle with Wishcoveries from other camps in the semifinal round of Wishcovery Season 2. The singer and the song. Leslie Longboen tells us why. Two more singing hopefuls get to move to the next round of Rishkovery Season 2, The Singer and the Song, after they were picked by composer Rishkovery Rani Raimundo in last night's intense one on one vocal showdown. Four Wishcoveries divided into two groups battled for the crucial slot. First to perform were Ariela Mi Apalis and Jemmy Picardal, who sang their hearts out while grooving to an upbeat tune. Hey. 
Abigail Erpelo and Janelle Kaali meanwhile tried to get Rani's nod by their interpretation of his latest song composition. Sky turned to happy blue Ever since I fell in love with you After the sing-off, Rani couldn't help but be emotional when he came to a point on deciding who among his members will be eliminated. I know how it feels. Um, I wish lahat kayong magkasama. Kaya, my way. In the end, Rani picked Jemmy and Janelle to continue to the next round. They will join Rando Manalus and Lorraine de Guzman as Camp Rani's top four picks for the semifinals. Paparamdam namin sa Pilipino na ang OPM hindi lang po for ballad. Ang OPM pwede po natin niyang i-upgrade. I'm just a singer in school. Never po ako nakisali sa mga competitions outside kasi may doubts po ako sa sarili ko. And yet, ito po ako ngayon kasama po sa top four. Pero I'm certain with one thing. I have the most unique and different set of artists. Meanwhile, composer wish cover Junji Marcelo will get to complete his top four wish coveries in his camp showdown session later tonight. Leslie Longbowan, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Up next on Y News. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un makes an unnoticed visit to China. Saudi woman allegedly fleeing abuse from her family in Kuwait, now under UN protection in Thailand. And Glauber's salt crystals that formed in a lake in Shaanxi attracts crowd in North China. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Why News returns with William Theo. Pangalokas the third. Good evening.